Hi everyone, this is Jim again, and in this tutorial we'll be exploring integrating Bolt and Unity's Cinemachine camera system. In the near future, we'll be doing a Zelda-inspired third-person adventure series where we cover Cinemachine in that context. Here, we're taking more of a broad approach, and we're going to use Unity to make something like a dynamic 3D interactive PowerPoint presentation. My hope is that it gives you ideas for how to use Unity as a tool in your day-to-day -day projects, whether you work in game development, film production, education, or are a student in school. This is going to be useful for storyboarding because you'll be able to design and present key moments or shots in your scene. And then for 3D artists, this is a way to dynamically show your environments and assets to others. And even though there's this broad application here, I wanted to include something cool for the game developers. So the second half of the video covers how to create something like the citizen follow feature of Cities Skylines. Okay, let's get started. As usual, I've created a package for you uh, of free assets. It includes this uh, lovely little low-poly Crusades era city, and I've embellished it a little bit with some environment touches. And I also have a hundred nav mesh agents wandering around. Feel free to follow along in your own scene, but I wanted to let you know that there are a couple of neat macros in the package for uh, random colors on the citizens of the city and for AI wandering of the nav mesh agents. After you've imported the package for this lesson, go to the Unity Asset Store and download and import the Cinemachine asset. Next, go to the hierarchy and right-click to create a camera in your scene. It doesn't matter where the camera is for now. On the camera, go to the inspector and click Add Component and search for Cinemachine Brain. We'll make a bunch of what's called virtual cameras. And you can think of virtual cameras as camera operators out there on the movie set. The brain that we just made chooses which virtual camera to display, and it's also where we control blending between our cameras. And this is gonna make a lot more sense once we add some virtual cameras to our scene. So let's do that next. Go to the hierarchy and create an empty game object and set it at the middle of the world coordinates. Call it camera control. What we're going to do is put all of our virtual cameras in here and then use Bolt to cycle through them. So go up to the Cinemachine menu and create a virtual camera. Nest that virtual camera inside the camera control empty parent object. And now, this is a really fun part. Uh, in the scene view, hold the right mouse button and use WASD to move around the scene view. And once you have a view that you like, with CM VCAM1 selected, the virtual camera, go to Game Object, the drop down menu at the top, and align with View. Now, your game view should look like your scene view and that virtual camera is set up. So what I'd like you to do is go through this process uh, maybe four or five times, and that process again is make a virtual camera in the Cinemachine drop-down top menu, child it, so put it inside camera control, navigate the scene view holding the right mouse button while using WASD along with Q and E, and the scroll zoom to uh, find a shot in this city that you think is cool. Select the virtual camera, and then go up to game object and do align with view. So keep going until you have four or five interesting shots around the city. Now, with your cameras all set up, it's time to make some bolt graphs. So click on camera control, that parent object, and on camera control, click Add Component and Add a Flow Machine. Click New Macro and call it Iterate Enable Children Cameras. 
I add underscore tutorial to my graphs so you don't get the ones that I'm giving you confused with the ones that you have. So you can just name yours normal. Iterate, enable, children, cameras. Okay, so here's the game plan. We're going to get all the camera children into a list. When we press right, the right arrow key, we're going to advance to the next camera on our list while deactivating all the other cameras. And then once we reach the end, the last child uh, within that camera control parent, we're gonna go back to the beginning. So it's like slides in a PowerPoint presentation. All right, so first things first, uh, drag up to get a little bit more space for the flow graph until the variables and the graph inspector uh, windows show up, those little panels on the side, and then go into variables into the scene tab, and let's create a couple scene variables. The first variable we can call active camera, and this is going to be an integer. Uh, active camera, this number is going to represent whatever camera we have in this list that is on, that's active. The variable is kind of like the ticket in a coat check. So as you know, you drop off your coat at a party, they give you a ticket, and then you come back later with that ticket to get the coat that's yours. Uh, I might be using that metaphor a little bit, <laughs> and I think it helps to explain what's going on with these lists uh, and what this active uh, camera uh, variable uh, represents. So next, let's make a scene variable for our list. So I guess this is like our, uh, our coat rack that the coats are on. So call this variable camera list, and it will be a list of game objects. On start, create a get components in children unit. And we want the one that says include and active. The type we want is Cinemachine Virtual Camera and enable include and active. So go through and make all your cameras, the virtual cameras here, the child cameras, uh, disabled or inactive. Next, hold Alt and left click drag the camera list out to store our list as a variable. Connect up the flow so the set variable happens and connect up the list. Hold control and left click drag to group this up. And let's call this group gather cameras store to list. Right click and type get list item and put zero for the index number and connect it to the set variable. We want to get the first item, zero, from the list, and we want to make that item active. So right click and search for game object set active. Hook that up and enable the value so that on start, we're setting active the first item on our list. Finally, hold Alt and left click drag out the active camera integer. We want to set this integer to zero at the start. That way, our list and this variable are starting on the same zero number. It's like we're calibrating them both at zero at the start. Hold control and left click drag to group this up. Call it activate first child set active camera number. Next, just as you use arrows to advance slides in PowerPoint, we want to switch between our cameras. So right click and create an on keyboard input unit. And for key, look for the right arrow. We can leave the action as down. When we press down on the right arrow, we want to add one to our active camera variable and then uh, use that next ticket to grab the next item on the list. So left click drag out the active camera variable and then get an add unit, and let's add one. The add unit we want is scalar. Then hold Alt and drag out the active camera variable so we set it with that plus one value now. And at the end, let's create a custom event trigger unit. Right click, add unit, type trigger custom event and call it 
camera change and connect it up at the end. You can imagine this as almost like a little ding light goes on and it's saying, oh, the active camera variable has changed. That's information that we can use as an event later on. Now, at this point, we press the right arrow and it adds plus one forever and ever, but we only have a few cameras. We want to cycle back to the beginning if we reach the end. So between on keyboard input and set variable, add a branch unit. Drag out the Boolean true false, the little purple dot from the branch unit and select greater or equal. And then drag out the active camera variable and plug it into A. Then we want transform get child count. This will count all the children cameras that are uh, underneath this parent object. But here's the thing, child count starts with one and not zero, like our index list of cameras. Add a subtract unit so that our counting here starts at zero, like our index, instead of one. Okay, so if the active camera number is equal to the end of our list, Rather than get our next item, we want to start over and make the active camera zero again. I'm going to move this group down because it belongs to the false branch. So until we've hit that greater than or equal to number, we're gonna keep adding uh, one to this active camera variable. Select the set variable unit and press control D to duplicate it and drag out the input and select integer and make this zero for going back to the start of our list. And then we also wanna run this flow out to the custom event trigger because if we go from the uh, last item to the first item, we're also doing another camera change, right? And let's group all that up as cycle through active cameras. Next, we want to use our active camera variable to get the cameras. With the start event, we already set things off at zero, but from here on out, we want a new event for one to know that it's time to enable and disable a new set of cameras. And this is why we made that custom event trigger earlier. So right click, add custom event, and type camera change. Right click and create a game object set active unit and toggle the value as active. Then we want a get list item unit and the index item we want is alt left click drag out the active camera variable. And then what list are we pulling from? So drag out a get variable of camera list because that's our list of camera game objects. Group all that up as sets child camera as active. So every time we press the right arrow, which changes the active camera number, we have an event that pulls the corresponding camera from our list. Now that we are activating, enabling child game objects, we want to deactivate any other uh, camera that isn't the current one as our active camera variable indicates. And the magic unit we want for this is a for each loop. Once our new camera is activated, run the flow into the for each loop and also connect up the camera list to the input. For each item in our list, we wanna check if it is the active camera. And if it isn't the active camera, let's make it inactive. So run the flow out from a body into a branch this whole group is about disabling. If this branch is true, the camera should be disabled. Drag out item and type get game object, and we want component get game object. Each item in this group we want to get and then deactivate. Drag out game object and type game object set active. And what we want to do is set this as inactive. 
from the branch, connect up the true flow to the deactivate unit because we're deactivating all of our cameras except for one. Drag out the Boolean for the branch and select not equal. For each item, plug item into A, drag out B and type get list item, and get the active camera variable for the index, and connect the list input to the camera list. So what you can see is that we're deactivating each object on our list unless it is the active camera. Control left click drag to group this up and call it disable non-active cameras. Excellent. So now play your game and test the script to see if you can cycle between cameras and whether when you reach the end, it goes back to the beginning. I had a lot of fun with this from just framing random shots. Uh, I started imagining a story connecting all these different places that I just randomly picked. And you can see in the hierarchy that we have gone from the end to the beginning. Okay, so this is something you can certainly do with regular non-Cinemachine cameras. So now we're gonna get into a little Cinemachine magic. So go to the Cinemachine brain, and then you'll see that there's uh, something called custom blends and click Create Asset. I'm going to call mine uh, something like Medieval City Blend Settings, something like that. Here's where you can choose blending between the cameras. So make transitions from your CM VCAM 1 to CM VCAM 2 and camera 2 to 3 and so on, all the way to the end of your list. And then uh, for the last one, you want to make a transition to the first one. So this is a great spot for you to tinker, playing around with the styles and the timing of your cameras. So it's gonna zoom, when you press uh, the arrow key, you'll zoom from one camera to the other, or you could do a uh, cut. If you look at the virtual cameras, you'll also see that there is a spot for look at. And this is another thing that you can tinker with. So try dropping an asset there, like the church, and see how it changes to have the camera focus on that as you pass it in a blend. By the way, if you really love this cinematography director stuff and you want to improve on it, I put a link below to my favorite book on the subject. It's called Filmmaker's Eye, Learning and Breaking the Rules of Cinematic Composition. I have no association. I just highly recommend this because it's one of those books that just by flipping through it, you'll find yourself uh, unconsciously training your eye as you watch movies and shows. For the next part of this video, we're going to work with a free look camera to set up a feature where we can click on any little citizen and follow them wandering around as they go about their business. Uh, if you want to keep working with the previous script that we have, I think a great challenge would be to try and implement a back arrow to go back to the previous camera. Okay, so as you are playing with your cameras and before you go to the next part, make a shot that looks over an area where you can see the little people. Uh, a good spot could be a parapet on a castle or maybe a watchtower. Uh, that way you'll have a bunch of citizens that you can uh, pick to follow. And then when you're done following them, you can go back to that uh, high up perched spot. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is in the game City Skylines. You're making this big city, and yet you have a feature where you can click on one of the little people and follow them around. And I love it. <laughs> so, but there's uh, actually other ways that you can use this. For example, I do historical work reconstructing ancient Rome. So if I were presenting shots around Rome, I think it'd be really neat if, uh, for example, someone could click on the statues and look at them from various angles or zoom up and look at the details. To implement this, when we click on the mouse, we're going to shoot out a ray to the scene. And if the ray hits something that's tagged uh, that we want to follow, we're going to switch to this free look camera. And once we click to something else, we'll deactivate the free look camera and go back to that watchtower camera. If you watch the previous MOBA video, what we're about to do is going to look familiar. Let's start with 
an event. So right click and type on button input. And the button we want is fire one. That's the mouse click. Run this into a physics raycast unit. And the physics raycast unit that we want has a ray, a max distance, and hit info. Okay, so for our ray, we need a camera screen point to ray unit. And this creates a ray from our camera to the world. And how do we get our camera? Because the screen point to ray unit is looking for a camera. Well, there's this great unit called camera get main. And if you click on it, look in the uh, graph inspector and it says the first enabled camera tagged main camera. So go to that brain camera that we made and tag that as main camera. This camera screen point to ray unit is also asking for a position. So the position that we want, uh, right click and type get mouse position. This is a handy unit because it tracks the pixel coordinates of our mouse and uh, then connect this all to the ray of the physics raycast. And then for max distance, put a large number, at least as large as 100 meters, because we're in the city scene with longer, farther distances. The best way to understand what this is doing here is to see it in action. So if you check out the MOBA movement video at about the 5 uh, 25 mark, you'll see uh, how to debug this ray here and see it as a line in your scene. Next, it's quite possible that someone clicks on something that doesn't have a tag or that is nothingness that has no collider, like the sky, for example. So right click and let's put in a null check unit. We have a hit info output on the raycast, so drag that out and type raycast hit get collider. Right click and type collider get game object. So from raycast hit get collider, run one output to the null check and run the other output to collider get game object. Once we have the game object that the collider was attached to, we can game object compare tag And that tag we are looking for here is capital C citizen. Uh, that's what the little colorful people wandering around are tagged as if you take a look at them. Connect the game object up and run the flow from not null to game object compare tag. This prevents us from seeing an error in our graphs even though everything is working as it should. Next, connect the game object compare tag to a branch. Before the branch, let's group this section up. So hold control and drag around the group and call it raycast on click, clicked on a citizen or not. For our branch, we have two options, true and false. So let's make our groups first this time because I think it's gonna help us think through what we're doing. Control left click drag and call the first group Activate free look camera for citizen follow. And let's make that a color, let's make it blue. Next, let's make another group near false and call it disable free look camera reactivate virtual camera. All right, so outside of Bolt, go up to the Cinemachine drop down and add a free look camera. Disable it in the inspector and in the hierarchy, do not put it in camera control. The reason for this is because we don't want to have it interfere with the number of our cameras. What we're doing is momentarily stepping out of the virtual camera sequence in order to free look at a target. The reason I wanted to implement this is because, say in the case of a museum exhibit or brainstorming storyboarding, you have both the structure flow of the virtual cameras along with the freedom and interaction of the free look camera. Since we're disabling and enabling our virtual camera, let's get our camera list scene variable and our 
active camera scene variable, and then get a list get item unit. Search for get list item. This unit again looks at the number uh, ticket, like the coat check, and then gets the camera uh, that that number represents. We want to run this into a game object set active unit and then have the value toggled off, which means we're deactivating the active camera. At the same time, when we click on a citizen, we want to activate the free look camera. So let's go over to the scene variable tab and make a variable for free look cam. and make it of type game object, and then drag in our inactive CM free look one camera, the free look Cinemachine camera from the hierarchy and drag it into the value. Drag this variable out onto the scene and connect it up to another set active unit. So you can just control D duplicate the previous one. Connect up the get variable of the free look cam. And this time we want the value to be checked because we're setting this free look camera as enabled as active. If you look at the free look camera in the inspector, you'll see that like the virtual cameras, there's a spot for follow and look at. These are slots we want to put the citizen in that we've clicked on. And with everything we've done, it's actually really easy to do this. So go into your graph, right click and type Cinemachine free look set look at. And we'll also use, so right click again, Cinemachine free look set follow. Let's start with the Cinemachine set look at and get that working. So connect the flow up from the set active to the set look at. The next input is for what free look camera it is that we want to give directions to. So connect up the free look cam variable. Finally, what is our look at transform target? For that, go all the way back to the Raycast hit get collider and then get game object and plug that uh, into the transform of the set look at. I don't like crossing wires over units and you can set a variable for the target and then get that variable. But in this case, I think it pays off to have your flows nicely organized and your groups labeled. Uh, so I think things are pretty clear here even though we're starting to get a little bit of the spaghetti. So to disable the free look camera that is the false of our branch, if we click on anything that isn't a citizen, select your previous units before the Cinemachine stuff and control D duplicate it. What we want to do is the opposite of the group that we've duplicated. So we want to reactivate the virtual camera we're at and we want to deactivate the free look cam. So I'm going to run the false from the branch into the reactivating the active camera. Then I'm going to organize things a bit. And I see in my organization that I didn't connect up the bool from the compare tag to the branch. So definitely do that or none of this is gonna work. And for just trying out this look at, you should copy the position of your virtual camera and then paste it into the free look camera. For example, say your virtual camera is on a watchtower. Copy the virtual camera and paste the component values into the free look camera. So when you click on a person, uh, it will appear as if you're on the same camera from the same spot. It's now just following whoever you clicked on. And you can even uh, lower the field of view on the free look camera and it will look like a quick zoom follow kind of feature on the person you clicked on. Assuming that all that is working for you, let's set up the Cinemachine free look set follow. So connect the flow and the transform from the look at unit and also run another output from the free look cam variable. Now, if you're new to all this and you've been wondering, can I use Bolt and C Sharp at the same time? Well, yes, you can. And I've included an awesome C Sharp uh, mouse zoom script. And this comes from Greg over at VR and Cinematics at Unity. So just go over to the free look camera and add component. 
and look for Cinema Machine Free Look Zoom. There are three different orbits for the Free Look camera. Um, so you can have the camera behave differently, whether you're close, uh, middle distance away, or far. And this is something that you're going to have to tinker with. You'll want to check out the Unity tutorials on free look cameras. What I'd like to do here is give you some tinkering tips for starting. So first, we have a top rig, a middle rig, and a bottom rig for these orbits, right? They're stages of our orbits. And now I've made things even more complicated and told you to add this script that adds a scroll wheel zoom with your mouse. In other words, there's a lot of stuff happening. So my suggestion to start would be to simplify things and just put 10 for the height and radius for all three stages. So in effect, we have just one stage and we can see what this Cinemachine free look Zoom C Sharp script is doing. So take a look at that script and you'll see that you have a max scale and a minimum scale. So set the minimum to something like 0.25 and then the max could be one or two. Now play the game, find a camera that is a camera where you can see little dudes and click on one of the little dudes and look at the inspector and on the free look camera at the orbits, if you scroll your mouse wheel forward or back, you're going to see how the scaling affects these rig orbit values. And by now you've probably noticed that our follow transform is at the feet of the character and not the head. So stop the game and then go into uh, the aim of each rig and go to tracked object offset and put all of them at one on the Y, and that'll put, that'll put it close enough to the head if not at the head. If you feel like you've got the handle of what's going on, my next tinkering suggestion would be to move on and make something like a two-stage rig. So try making 30 for the length and height of the top rig and 20 for the middle and the bottom. Now we have, in effect, a two-stage rig with mouse zooming, and I've expanded my axis control so you can see what values I have here. Like I said, there's a, a lot to work with here. And we haven't even touched on some key Cinemachine things, like how you can enable these camera guides and uh, control this dead zone of the camera and how it moves. My goal here is mainly uh, introduction and a broadly useful implementation that you can tailor to uh, your project, whether it's in game development, film production, design, or uh, education. Since Bolt opens up programming to all kinds of people from time to time will take a really broad approach with tutorials. And if you did end up using this for something, please let us know in the comments or on Discord. By the way, if you did want to implement some text that shows up with uh, something different in each camera, um, I have a incomplete macro of me messing around with that. Um, it's not finished. You'll have to work with it, but at least it gets you started. Uh, and my dog just came into my room, which means it's time for me to stop working on tutorials. Uh, I should say that all that text stuff is attached to the deactivated canvas object. Uh, so just take a look at that. I hope it helps you get started. And finally, it's hard to talk about cameras in Unity without talking about the awesome post-processing stack that you can import from the Asset Store. To add it, click Add Component on your Brain camera and search for Post-Processing Behavior. Since it's on the Cinemachine Brain, it applies to all Cinemachine cameras. And I've started a black and white and color profile for you to play around with. Thanks again for watching and best of luck with all your bolting.